Welcome to episode 31 of Ring Talk, the weekly Goodwin boxing show. With us, Steve Goodwin, as most weeks, and Sam Smith, the Commonwealth title challenger, who we're going to be coming on to in a little bit about her career, where she's up to and what the future plans are. Uh, but firstly, we'll start off with Steve, uh, fresh from a weekend at the O2 that has probably reinvigorated a love of boxing, hasn't it? With uh, yeah, great. two of your lads, Frank and Derek, that yeah. uh, both came back with wins, Frank expected. Derek, maybe not expected, certainly not expected in the manner that it happened. No, correct, but I mean, he was, what we did know is he was really focused this time, unlike when he went to Monaco. Um, and he's, he got reinvigorated, you know, he knew this was make or break. Yeah. And he really pulled it out of the bag, and I think he showed he was far from finished in the fight. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> which ironically, he looked finished through the fight in certain places. I mean, like, in See, that see fight, I've, I've, I've not watched it until I've only watched it live. Yeah. He looked under pressure. But I, there was a case, I've read certain other people that have thought the same thing, that you could have stopped the fight at some point. Did you actually, like, did you uh, that? I didn't necessarily think that myself, but I've read opinions that say that, in that he was like really taking a bit of a pacing, but th that man is probably, I reckon between him and Dillian White, the two hardest blokes in boxing. Like, the two blokes, if you took it outside a boxing ring, I don't want anything to do with those two men. <laughs> 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 Honestly, I think they, like Derek has got some, some nuts on him, isn't he? He's yeah, but the thing is, he's now back in the. He's really back in the mix now. Yeah, really back in the mix. So. I mean, that reinvigorates a career that I'm not saying it was, it was looking down, but after the European, the Caviel fight, um, there were question marks over it. And you've been saying for a long time you wanted that big name, that big opportunity. It doesn't doesn't get much bigger, uh, bigger or better than Carlos Taka. If you think when he fought Dylan White, he was great. He went to Monaco, and you had the nightmare that Don Charles's visa didn't come through. Yeah, and his corner team. It was a bit. It was. It was a bit in disarray. Just to see like they were well, I knew the night before there was a problem. Um, it really wasn't. Wasn't right there at all. And therefore that didn't really count. And then we he came back and he wanted the big fights, so we got him Taka. And then he managed to to do. It. I'm not sure how many people thought he could win. Um, he thought he could win, but he knew he would have to go through. You know, the period he thought he would take over in the second half of the fight was always his plan. He felt Takam was very strong and he said he went back on the ropes because at that point he couldn't outman Takam and he knew he'd have to go through the rounds to outman him. And it, yeah. in effect, it was sort of a version of the Ali thing against the form where he's gone to the ropes, took it and then come back. And have, have you seen there's some footage of him sparring Brian Jennings? I haven't seen it. Brutal, brutal sparring. Not dissimilar to how that fight was. Um, but that's what he planned. He, he said it was his plan to do that, to take, let Takao fire off, fire off, fire off, and then he couldn't compete with him for brute force in the middle of the ring, so let him till he started to weaken. And he said in the seventh, he knew he started to, halfway through the seventh, he knew he was weakening. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole load of questions we've got about what next for Derek, it's a true to touch on later, but just, I mean, as a performance, as a man, I can see how delighted you were for him and Don and yeah. everybody involved in it. Um, that was fantastic for him. Don Charles put so much effort into his gym and he hasn't had the best of luck runs lately with Derek and, yeah. and Frank obviously losing the British title to Callum Johnson so it was really great for the gym and for Don to get things back on track and he's a good man and he, he deserved his moment as well. Yeah, uh, Frank Bookley only returned. Um, if you see his dad he will, so he will tell you off of that. He's a silent G. Is it? Yeah. Is it Pete Buglioni, his dad? No, no, it's Ralph. But it's Ralph. Not, okay. It's Buglioni. That's right. I think it's Pete the father. And he tells, and he tells well, everybody. I'll be all right then. There's a silent G. It's, it's Buglioni. Buglioni. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that, Frank, <laughs> Pete, Ralph, <laughs> Mrs. Buglioni, all of you. Um, but yeah, he returned and got the win. That uh, the guy didn't come out of his, his corner, did he? It was no. Um, a convincing enough win. It, it was what he needed, I guess, wasn't it? it was, just to go out and, and get a few rounds a few in rounds. And, and stop the bloke. It's exactly what was needed. So works worked well and uh, he can now move on and we'll look for a fight for him November, December time. Yeah, again, there are questions I think about what... Oh, okay, we'll deal with that later. Then. Yeah, so we'll deal with that later. Um, other news from Goodwin Boxing this week. Junior Saab has got his debut date. September the 8th. Um, which, yeah, that's, uh, there's a lot of hype and there's been a lot of talk about Junior Saab, so it'll be good to see. Great, we, we, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a fantastic uh, thing. We've got, obviously, the Jumani Camiro, Jeffrey Afori. They're going at it on Twitter, aren't they? God, they are, aren't they? <laughs> and that's been added to the Danny Connor. K Prosper Bill on That's the 13th good. of October and there's more to be added at the moment we've got Perth being open today which we haven't got results for we've got 
the area council's meeting tomorrow to decide certain other fights we propose and we've got the board meetings next week opening the bigger purse bid so it's all will be a lot more to a lot moving part a lot moving part and the next week next week we'll be able to talk a lot more about some more fights that will have been made by then okay so other than that nothing's changed at the moment for the other really, cards no we're, just, we're sitting there but there will be a lot to talk about next week and then a lot more to talk about the week after right, so we'll, we'll save it for then yeah um, so it doesn't stop in August like a lot of boxing does um, well it's not for some but it's even busier for us because we're sorting out the plans for everybody for September onwards yeah uh, there's no news yet on the Wadi Camacho purse bid situation no it was due in um, yesterday open to Day, so uh, we'll see what's happened. You know, I, I haven't got I haven't got a clue as to what's gone on there yet. So yeah. we'll see. Cool. I spoke um, to Eddie on Saturday night about it. Yeah, my uh, mate. Yeah, your friend. <laughs> uh, I spoke to Eddie about it in detail and about some other things, which again that will come out. Um, but yeah, so we'll see whether. I wasn't sure he, you know, I'm not sure whether they put a bid in Metro or they haven't. So we'll find out yeah. today. What kind of beddings he got? What kind of what? Bedding. Is it Transformers bedding, like I've got? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. I think he, he just sends people like you pictures of himself and signs them, you know, the score. <laughs> Posters. He said I can have one above oh, my bed. There you go. Cheers, Eddie. I appreciate it. <laughs> Eddie, have you ever watched this? I'll sit down and interview. I'm going to message Coogan. We'll get it sorted. <laughs> Uh, um, Can I say to Eddie though, you're quite good to be, I've been interviewed by you, it's quite good. It's alright, no problem. No, I mean I've got a whole load of questions. I'll, I'll see you every week, I've still got questions. I've got loads <laughs> I can ask Eddie. It's great fun. Yeah, I'm sure you have. <laughs> right, we're going to turn our attention now to Sam. Um, Sam has travelled down from Leeds to come and sit in an office in Lake Buzzard with Steve and uh, discuss what goes on with your career. So. For those that don't know you, Sam, like you're the first boxer, I think is this right, the female boxer that boxed under Goodwin Promotions Management. Yeah. yeah. Um, you've got a background that's, you've got a, a reasonable level amateur background. You boxed then in the uh, Maltese Boxing Commission, you yeah, had a license. I only had two amateur. Two but that was still a decent yeah. level, wasn't it? Like it wasn't. It wasn't bad. No, no, I won both. Yeah. Both amateur fights, yeah. Um, and then decided to go on a, a British boxing license. Um, and yeah, now you've you've kind of established yourself a bit. So you had the loss recently on the Haymaker yeah. card for the Commonwealth title. Um, how hard was that to take? Was that bitter? Yeah, yeah it was bad. It was, um Avenger sent me a message, Steve and stuff, and I was just like, I can't believe how bad I felt from that fight. It was just horrendous. And I think it's, it's not just the loss; it was the circumstances. Yeah, that I mean, it, well, I was saying to Steve, like, it was like I'd just lost 11 years' work. Obviously, I've been around boxing a long time just to get an opportunity like that. Yeah. And it was like I'd just. Yeah. I know there were a lot of circumstances that you had, Steve, of matching Sam through trying to get opponents that weren't available, mm -hmm. um, having to settle on somebody you couldn't get any footage of, which probably didn't mm. help you necessarily. Um, and then the girl came out and just almost windmilled. Like, I'm guessing that through your professional experience, you've not ever seen somebody that comes out. No, like, probably not the professional side of it, but obviously I was on the unlicensed or white colour scene, whatever you want to call it before. So I'm kind of used to that, people coming out yeah. fast. I just, for this one, I don't know, don't know what happened. And that's the honest, I, I just don't know what happened. And people are saying, oh, well, you got caught and you got caught early. Maybe I did, I don't, I, yeah. I don't know. And you were saying when you watched the footage back, you didn't necessarily <laughs> know what had gone on. I didn't, um, I, obviously, didn't, I, I didn't remember going down. I didn't remember going back up. It wasn't until I watched it. Yeah. Um, I just assumed I'd got caught and the referee jumped in and were counting. Uh, you so boxes are mad. Like, yeah. <laughs> <can> you, <laughs> I just, at some point you've been hit so hard that you've gone down and got back up and continued fighting. You don't remember. I don't, didn't remember. I That's was crazy. shocked when I got home and I watched it. I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, I went down. Like, <laughs> it's only the second time I've been, I've been down yeah. in my career. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's not the end of the story, is it? No, I mean, obviously at the time I was just like, didn't know what I wanted to, not that, that I didn't know what I wanted to do. It was more my age and obviously is an opportunity like that going to come up again? Do I want to just be in boxing for sake of boxing? No, I want to be in boxing because I want to win titles. I want to do well. So that was more, more the factor. Yeah. Um, but then when speaking to Steve and Kevin and obviously Martin, they were all like, look, you know, you've still got enough to give. We can get some opportunities, but it's up to you. So after licking my wounds and burying my head for a little bit, <laughs> um, we're, we're back, we're back in gym, 
back out on seventh, get another one in by the end of this year, yeah. and just get back on doing what I'm doing. So you fight up in Leeds on that card. Yeah. Uh, is it Mark Bateson? Mark one? Bateson. Um, yeah. So is that? I know we kind of had conversation. Well, I was privy to conversations earlier whereby you're talking opponents, but it's not. You don't want a knockover job, no. do you? You want to I go in. I can't. For myself personally, I don't think it's going to do me any favours. You know, I still I need to know that I'm still able to you know take the punches and yeah be me will the mindset be any different when that first bell rings given what happened to you in that last fight will the mindset be any different when the bell rings in your next one I don't think so um, I always go out to win um, I put 100% in the training so my mindset will be the same I go out to win and, and that's it you know I've come back from uh, I lost to Christina who was just won the WBC yeah international well uh, I lost to her on a point which was it is what it is um, <laughs> and then I came back from that fight and not I didn't take the loss in a negative way into the next fight so I think I've got to do the same again I've got to make it give me a bit more burn and a bit more fire to go and do well yeah so Steve like how much do you think you can still help Sam achieve those dreams of getting the the belts for the little one that you mm-hmm. you've got now that all those things that can help Sam as a career ends uh, in how many years it is, I don't know, maybe five, maybe less, who knows? Maybe less. <laughs> <laughs> Determined it'll be less. Um, you know, achieve those those dreams that she's got for Well, you listen to me often talk to people and there's always a plan, isn't there? Yeah. There's always, there's always an idea and we've got a plan. Yeah. And um, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to make sure that when people have down, things happen bad in their careers that you resurrect it. Mark Shinquin, for example, we've resurrected him with an English title shot after we were stopped in a round or two rounds last time. So we just resurrect and make sure that you know because you make a loss, it's not the end of the world. It's an end, it's, it's probably the end of the world if nobody knows how to get you back there. But we've got a plan, and March of next year should be back. I think it's always one of those things that. I think you've said it before, that it's more important to be there when they lose and when they win. 100%. Um, if Sam's Commonwealth champion, apart from saying, well done, give a kiss on the cheek, wow, well, and we're doing well, and then planning the next fight, she doesn't need any, she doesn't need you then, she needs you, she needs me there more now, yeah. and that's more important to be there, so that I always say that when a boxer loses, that's when I'm, that's when they need me even more. And I know there were lots of, because uh, again, I was privy to some of the conversation, the, the avenues that you're going to investigate into mm-hmm. what you can do for Sam, and what, you know, what makes most sense financially, career-wise, Time wise, all these things. Yeah. Um, We've listened. There's, there's always there's, there's a plan. There's got to be a strategic plan for everybody. Yeah. Otherwise, how can you get through it? We've got a plan, and nothing will, nothing will please me more in, Mar- in March next year if Sam winning a big title. So that's the plan then. So it's going to be hopefully two fights before the end yep. of 2018. Yeah, we're going to get um, two in. And then obviously look at March for a big title. A big title. A big title. So what's the dream for you to end with? Is it to get, say, a Commonwealth title? Would you be tempted at that point to say, I've, I've my, achieved? <laughs> yeah. um, if you'd have asked me this probably before, I'd have said, no, I've always wanted a shot at the green belt. That's always what I've wanted. But sometimes you have to take a little step back and analyse where I am, age, what's possible, what Steve can make possible. So if I get the Commonwealth title, or whatever title we choose to go for next, and Steve says, "I think, I think this is where you are." Then I have to accept that. If not, and there's more to come, then I'll go uh, wherever so the fights are. Get a world title. <laughs> 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 you know, funny things about look at the inches away. How many fights he's lost, right? Yeah, he's back there again. He, a loss doesn't define you, and especially a loss when you get caught. It doesn't define Sam. It would if she'd got beaten up for nine rounds and lost every yeah. round and beaten to a pulp. That's different. It didn't happen. She got caught in the first round. And that's, that's irrelevant. But also, I mean, not to be disparaging about the sport, but it's a smaller pool of women yeah. that take part than men. So if you can get your hands on a Commonwealth title, a couple of wins than that, then you look at Hannah Rankin, who lost out in Sweden, I think it was, who's fighting this weekend in New York on a Luda Bella card for a world title. Best of luck to Hannah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, fingers crossed she does the job and comes back. She'll be the first female Scottish world champion. It'd be phenomenal. Um, so I really hope she does that. So, yeah, I mean, does that inspire yeah. you to see something like Hannah going out and getting that? Is it, if you can get your hands on a title? Yeah, I mean, I've been... People have offered us titles and stuff. It's just not been the, the right time. But eventually, I'd love to be over in America, you know, just what boxer would love to see. Can I just say that we have been offered... A, we've been offered a world title shot as we sit here today. Yeah. And um, we turned it down because I think that we'd be better 
move in a different route. Same thing as when we were offered Joe Joyce's Doge is over. I'd, it was my best, my my feeling. We shouldn't do that fight. There's a better route, and the, and that's proven to be the case. And I think the same would be shown for Sam because Sam would have had to travel probably to Germany for that one title shot. I don't. We did. I didn't feel that was appropriate on the back of the last thing. So I want to get it back again, and then March. Who knows where we are in 12 months' time? 12 months' time. I'm hoping if it was perfect, should be fight for world title in 12 months. And I don't see any reason at all why that can't happen. It was my friend Riku, who I think he watches it, so how you doing Riku? Who pointed out the other day about um, the Derek Chisora, Joe Joyce stuff, and said a lot of managers would have cashed out on that Joe Joyce offer, uh, with running the risk of, you know, he could he could take an absolute beating Derek out of that fight. Could win, could lose, but it's not going to be an easy fight either way. Whereas you didn't, you took the other routes and you took that opportunity with Carlos Takam, and now that opens up so many options and the key to that was and what people didn't really get that this is why I think we're trying to do the job well and I said the same to David Hay at the time beating Carlos Takam who's world ranked in two other bodies Derek's already ranked in the WBC he'll now get ranked in the WBA and the IBF right? Joe Joyce is ranked anywhere yeah so what does he achieve and the money that he got for Takam was more than he got for Joyce oh right it was more money than we were offered for Joyce because the figures that were offered that were banded about for Joyce weren't actually yeah. accurate honestly they weren't accurate <clears throat> so he got more money but we would have done the fight for less money so the bottom line is that it was just a smart move money wise it was good exposure wise it was great and it's the right type of fight for him to take on somebody who's seasoned and had a ranking Joe Joyce offered nothing in ranking terms and it was a great fight like, <laughs> it was always going to be a great fight wasn't it, was it? I'm sure Joe Joyce was going to be a great fight as well but the end benefit was what would Derek have achieved mm-hmm. wouldn't have achieved any ranking wouldn't have been closer towards a world title wouldn't have been closer towards anything so yeah. this is and, and I'll tell you what also happened Saturday I have ne- the whole arena was thinking <laughs> Derek Chisora it was mad this this is a guy that used to be the villain yeah. and do crazy things. You've now got and he's everybody was so happy for him and they were all, the crowd were not mad for him. So he's actually got a reinvigorated support fan base. I think people love him now. Yeah. He's gone from sort of the one they all like to hate to the one they love. It's almost George Groves-esque in that Groves, I think, going into that Carl Froch fight was yeah. disliked and Froch was a kind of national yeah. um, kind of love. And then coming out the back of it, the roles had reversed. Yeah. And, um, you know, slightly longer with Derek's career than, uh, than yeah. that. <laughs> but I think now people are admiring for what he's gone and done. Everybody had written him off. And I think the key now is people will want to watch Derek Chisora. Yeah. And in, a, and in an era of pay-per-view television, this actually enhances his value as potential pay-per-view fighter. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah, absolutely. How much uh, what boxing do you watch outside of your own or your opponents, is it? You, um, yeah, I, t- keep, I try and keep up to date with, obviously, with females and stuff. Yeah. Twins. <laughs> work. <laughs> times. Young twins time, as well. Yeah, 14 months, so time is, even if you've got five minutes, they're, they're like, they're like little monkeys and climbing all over you, they're pinching your phone and all, so it's, it's tight to sit down and get any time but you wouldn't change it no <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the gym the gym that you've got yeah the, is it your own gym that you run yeah I call on it with uh, a lad who I used to go to school back to we've been friends since school so that's pretty pretty good we've known each other a long time so give it a mention for anyone who's up in Leeds and looking for a training base Alliance Boxing Club in Leeds we're just based in Crossgate so anyone wants to come and check us out come and have a look down there yeah, I know uh, a friend of mine, Terry, that goes and trains yeah, up yeah. there when he's up in Leeds. Who trains there, does he? Comes up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, I mean, looking forward now, we're talking about two fights. So, the next one was, what was the date of that? 7th of September. 7th of September. And then you want to fit another one in before the end of the yeah, year. Yeah, ideally. Uh, so, how does that work with between you and Steve? Because you've got a, a, almost like, um, I guess, an agreement with uh, Mark Bates and... Yeah. And Martin, your trainer, and Steve down here, yeah. and yourself, like as a four-way situation, is that difficult for you to kind of navigate around? Or? Not at all. I think everyone, right from the beginning, has had their own kind of. Like my job is fight to train. fight to train. Uh, Martin's job, obviously, to train me. And don't get me wrong, Martin advises me a lot, but ultimately, 
we leave decisions down to Steve because that's what's the point of having a manager if you're going to yeah. kind of look after yourself. Mark and Danny Thornton run the shows in Leeds and I've known known Danny quite some time, friends and obviously once I turned over and got my British licence then that will fine, it were all good to box on their shows so everyone's just doing their own little, yeah. little thing. Yeah. That's right, I'm glad it works well because that's a lot of a lot of people, potentially a lot of egos or issues. Yeah, no, could. everyone's doing their own. And whenever anything comes up, I'll always message Steve and say, right, there's a show this day, what do you think? Yeah, it makes sense, no, don't do it. Yeah. No. Yeah. I listen to what I'm getting advice to do. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's fine. My, my thing is when we're talking about, we get these fights out of the way, make sure they're the right opponents, and then, then I go into over life to sort out the mechanics of trying to create the opportunities. That's yeah. really where, that, where my bit works. And in the meantime, Mark's been really good putting Sam on, and it's all working fine. Excellent. Um, right, we've got some questions. I've not been around in the workplace today to uh, print these off. Um, right, so the first question, Paul Altai. Who would Steve have most liked to have managed from the past, and why? Nigel Ben. Just because your favourite fighter, or yeah, loved him. He's great. Um, I was always a Eubank man. Is uh, you imagine managing him? What's the fun? It sits for under. I'd have like slipped my wrist something. Yeah, uh, I like watching Eubank. I wouldn't want to manage him. Um, no, but, but but I think if everybody could be like, and we're talking about like a Sam or a Leone, it's an easy job. Yeah. Um, Nigel Ben, I'm sure wouldn't have been easy to handle, but the excitement around him would have been great. Sure, so. Derek's easy. Derek's, Derek's great in his own way. <laughs> uh, another, <laughs> another question from Paul Octay. Do you now feel privileged to have Martin as a friend? Now he's an internet IFL sensation. <laughs> Uh, we'll skip over that one. Uh, I would say, I will chuck something in about that, and this is true. I have had people in boxing not wanting to deal with me because of my friendship. <laughs> that is true. That is said, true. That is true. They have said to me, I won't deal with you because of your association with him. So, okay, that's cool with me. So, move on then. <laughs> I don't. You are, you are a negative influence <laughs> in my life. Do you know this? Uh, there are many positives I drink. <laughs> <laughs> I don't criticise things without reason. Do you know what? You don't. You actually. So you think there's nothing wrong with that? Because I've got no problem with somebody criticising things. Sometimes I don't get it. Why well, shows are not very good? It's fine to criticise when things aren't great. I'm on a podcast. People criticise all the time. Yeah. So what? Good. Just get on with it. Good. Move on. No, I've got no. Better. I've got no problem. No problem with that. Um, <laughs> how many of your boxers again immediately? asked you to get a Conor Ben fight after Saturday. This is John Bailey. Well, Adrian Martin's been all over it. Adrian Martin, I love that. Like, all over it. Proactively. But, he, but he's not going to Curtis Felix wants it. They all want it. They, a lot of my fighters want it. But there's just no point because it's not going to happen. I think there's a misconception. I'm not saying that's the case with Adrian or Curtis or any of those. I think there's a misconception amongst boxing fans that it would be an easy fight. I don't think Conor Ben's an easy fight. It would be for an Errol Spence Jr. Don't Correct. get me wrong. But for lads around area level looking yeah. for fights it's a tough fight still like Conor Ben's a full time athlete Conor right. Ben's a, you know he's sponsored by Reebok he's got every advantage going he's in the Sims gym he's sparring world champions every day Absolutely. he must be learning at a trajectory that's, that's very steep like you want him now I get that um, you know in 24 months it might be a different prospect but I get why lads want it um, but I, I think they also I think someone like Adrian realises it's a hard fight it's not an easy fight but, but he'd probably say, you know, he believes he can win. And um, I think if any of my ones around that weight wanted to fight him, I think you'd, you'd give it a go. I'm not, he's vulnerable. He's exciting to watch kind of being. Yeah. Um, but you can see they're not really putting him in. I know Paino was, uh, ended up being a risk, but he wasn't a risk. He shouldn't have been a risk. But he's not, put, he's not going in with any hungry young fighters. Now, you can see the ones he put in the 3-0 and 4-1s and and ones earlier on, the English ones. There was they, a pain bake yeah, yeah, like two I'm not, days notice. And I'm not being disrespectful. They're doing it with no notice. And they probably are not, haven't got the same amateur pedigree that some of these other lads have. So, you know, and, and he, I mean, I, was it the other day we were offered? I was offered... I'll give you an example. Miles Shinquin, although I didn't want him to do it, wanted to fight Joshua Boazzi, right? No, okay. This is before he got the top. Anyway, it wasn't a fight for me. But, but I'm, I'm obliged to talk to Matchroom about that fight. So I said, he wants to fight Joshua Boazzi. Um, talk to me. Uh, I'll, you know, at the end of the day, I'm hoping they're not going to give him enough money. I'll say, Miles, I'm not, uh, Joe, I'm not doing this. 
no, we don't want the fire. I got offered it with six days notice. And then they came back six days before the show and says, uh, will, they, will you take it? I said, no, we want, we want another route now. We asked for six, he's a, he's a former English champion. We wanted six, seven weeks notice. You want now to be disrespectful to him, give six days notice. Yeah. That's not right. But that's what they do with the, the type of the yeah. compens. They're giving these kids very short time to prepare. Can you blame them? No, because they're doing the job for their fighters. So I don't blame them. It's not a criticism, but the thing is, you shouldn't, in my opinion, don't take the fight if you're managing these other kids. Absolutely. Um, and being realistic, what level would you say Conor Ben's at? Because I know he's won his WBA trinket, but would you say, I don't, I can't think off the top of my head, is it Louis Green, who's a world weight champion at some Chris Congo's mandatory. Yeah, like, do you think he beat Chris Congo? I don't think he beats Louis Green, and I don't think he beats Chris Congo. Yeah, no, I kind of agree. I think they'd be good fights. I, don't I wouldn't be adverse to seeing them. And I'd like to say, Louis Green, I think Chris Congo's better than Louis Green, that's my opinion, but I don't think he beats either, at this moment in time. Yeah. But I think they know that as well, so they're gonna, they've got a great name to work with. They're not going to take those fights, they're gonna manoeuvre him around everything and, but again, to Anthony Yard. you have to praise Matchroom for the efforts and their work of building him as a, a profile and a boxer. They're brilliant at what they do. Yeah. They're brilliant. Look, credit where credit's due, they are brilliant at building their fighters. They know exactly who to put them in with and when. And to be fair, you can say the same about Frank Warren, who said Anthony Yard. Brilliant at building the fighters and brilliant at taking them to where they're going and avoiding the, the little banana skins along yeah. the route. They're good at it. But I better not talk about Eddie because he'll send me a poster. <laughs> Something. Um, next question. How many heart attacks did you have through the Chisora fight? Oh. <laughs> From John Bailey. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You remember, now I've got a heart condition, right? And in the end, I'm, I'm watching him on the ropes getting, getting in. And, I think, oh, and I'm looking at it like this. I'm thinking, no, no, no. And I remember I was looking at that similar to when I was watching your fight. And when, when you're getting out of here, oh, no, I can't. And I, I don't look. I don't look, pro- I don't look properly, no. So I just think, oh, I can't. I can't, I can't actually look at it. when you were, And you just look away and you think, well, look a little bit. And when you hear the crowd cheering, you wouldn't look at a bit more, and, then, and then you think I'm going to watch it probably when I go home <laughs> but I know you've had it before with two lads that you manage like uh, Rakeem Noble K Prosper when they fought and you yeah. were saying to me before that fight I'm not even sure I'm going to watch it but, uh, you're like that it's, it's if you feel I think sometimes you can if you know you've got if you're watching a fighter that you are and, and they're on top and they're winning it's quite comfortable I don't like watching it win when it's everywhere, yeah. and it, it's, it, it is. You, if you like, if you really like, you know, like someone. And for Derek, I knew that was his last chance. So for him, that was, you know, it was it was such an important fight for him. Yeah. Going back to uh, Adrian Martin, he's asked a question: Why is Conor Ben saying he's a different league and he's a different breed in response to being called out? We've both beaten journeyman for titles, and he's got more money behind us. Well, he's a different breed because he's being funded by sponsors, and but but he's not a different breed in terms of ability. But he's got to say that bullshit because what's he going to say to Adrian? I don't want you. You're, you're an actual threat to me. Um, so he's going to spout the crap, the same crap that we've heard, we've heard before of other fighters, which I don't want to go over this old ground again. It's just rubbish. It's a way of him defect, deflecting from his mind. So let's see. Let's see Conor Ben fight somebody who's young, hungry, undefeated, and better than Adrian Martin in his next fight. Yeah. Okay. I doubt it. That's fair. And uh, next question is from um, cut this bit, Josh. <laughs> Ricky Wright, my favourite MC. Thank you very much for last Thursday, Ricky. Did a good job. It's good, wasn't he? Very good. Um, I've got a question. Since you manage Nicola Adams, who fights in the super flyweight division, there's talk that there aren't many meaningful fights in the lighter weights for women. What are the chances of matching Nicola against Welsh lady, reigning bantamweight WBC international champion, and super flyweight EBU European champion Ashley Brace? I wouldn't imagine that's what the Frank Warren team would like to do. I think they want to go straight for a world title. Right. Um, so she would qualify to fight one of the world champions. So I'd imagine that that would be the route that we would choose to go down. And actually, Brace doesn't offer that. But I mean, there's a chance. I'm guessing. Like again, I, I'm not familiar particularly with the women's lighter weights. But is there a chance if Nicola and she's got every chance of picking up a world title? Um, if she did that, then. Is there a chance that Ashley Brace could be an opponent, well, like possibly, a domestic? Well, possibly, absolutely, because that will be down to the the, the trainer, who's now uh, Dominic Ingalls training her. Um, it will be down to 
Queensbury who promote and, and Nicola herself and myself who manages her so yeah. if we all decide that's viable if Nicola it's financially viable and to the promoter they think it's financially viable then it becomes an option but it doesn't when Nic Nicola is, can go straight for world title doesn't make any sense for that fight to happen there if, if Ashley builds and it becomes you know why not an all British world title, women's yeah. world title fight would maybe down the line do you ever have much of Nicola as a female boxer in Leeds have you no, crossed paths um, I think we've crossed paths when I was amateur, right. um, other than that, no, we don't. Yeah. Yeah. I just realised both my female boxers are in Leeds, aren't they? From Leeds. Obviously. I took one on, I took one on from, I took another one on from Kent yesterday, so I've never got, I've never got three, so I've just gone outside Leeds. We had Angela Hebden as well. Yeah, she's had a year sabbatical, so. Yeah, yeah, she's uh, off having a baby, isn't yeah, she? So good luck, Angela. Yeah, hopefully she'll be back next year. Um, a question from my friend Terry Chapandama, can you ask Sam if the gym's open tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> the gym is open tomorrow, Terry, but it's female only tomorrow. We'll fit for <laughs> that one. <isn't> <laughs> I've seen him around female company. Uh, <laughs> um, to Steve from Terry again, Chisora, one or two fights from fighting AJ. <sighs> Which a lot of people laughed at the, the concept of it. Do you know, he's not a million, a million miles away from it. It wasn't really anything that we had thought about, and I think he'd have to go and do some, have another, win something else in the meantime. But it's not as ridiculous as it would have seemed before last Saturday, is it? No. I've got a question on this line. Um, because there was a Hearn interview that I saw, because of course I see all of them, because that's what I'm saying. What do you do, yeah. Um, where he referred to, um, he talked about Chisora and he was saying, you know, maybe he goes out some fights Wilder, say, or maybe he goes, he wanted him to fight somebody else. But he was throwing all these names in. I thought, at what stage do you get consulted on this? Like, because Eddie does all the talking about it, but what goes no, no, on? Tack well, basically, we will I'll give you an example. Eddie offered us David Price for that show on Saturday. Right. So I went back and said, no, we don't have price, I want Takam, go and get me Takam. So we went and got Takam. So, so when you see him on these interviews saying um, yeah. there's, a, there's a chance Chisora could fight Wilder, like, is that just the adrenaline of Saturday night getting to him as he's there? We haven't, we have not. The bottom line is, we decide Team Chisora, which is Don Charles, Derek, myself, will make the decisions as to who we fight. Eddie will make will make offers for the fights and financial offers for the fights and we will discuss it together with Eddie. But these names are being thrown about. At the end of the day, that to me there look to be four 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 or five different options out there for him. And we will I'm gonna meet Derek, we're gonna talk and then I said let them have a celebration this week and probably next week we'll meet. We'll discuss what we think is, is the right plan. Then we'll go and meet Eddie or Paul Reddy from Matrim and then we'll discuss it together. But the bottom line is the final say is had by the manager. Eddie is the promoter. Yeah. But I'm the manager, Derek's the fighter, Don's the trainer. So it's us really that we would we will we will choose the path. And when you are in Desperateville and after losing to Dylan White we took the European title, really we weren't we weren't in a position where we could instigate our own our own our own fights as such. So that was the only offer on the table. To can we chose, because, and therefore that's great. And now we're in a better position. We, so we, the only, but we haven't really. At the end of the day, it is us that choose. But then he throws the names about, but nobody's had a meeting at that stage. But I think as a promoter, that's what he does. He wants to install, install interest in Derek and throw all these names about. No, I get that entirely. Like I think it's it's great it's good practice. Yeah. In that you know you suddenly you have fans out there that have now seen that video and linked your name to Wilder, to Joshua, to that's good promoting. Isn't yeah, it? that's what his job is at the end of the day. Yeah. But at that point, at that point, there has been absolutely no discussion right. about anything, and it links towards not just who it is, it indicates it where it is, because I, if you look at the support Derek had in London, I think that he has a massive advantage now fighting in London, because the crowd were unbelievable to him. He was going for a hard time in that fight, but the crowd, it was unbelievable lifting him, and yeah. he was, you know, he's orchestrating the crowd at the end of the rounds. If you go and fight in America, you're not going to have that, are you? Yeah. So therefore, it's it's and there are pay-per-views, as you know, we've discussed pay-per-views before, but they they have to deliver a certain amount of pay-per-views here. So I believe that in the right with the right dance partner, Derek is now a pay-per-view fighter. Fair enough. Um, Kieran Nelson had asked a similar question, so a quick mention for him. 
question from John Bailey. I think this alludes to a certain interview that Derek did on uh, straight after the fight. Did Derek have a shoulder injury? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, also, with the ever increasing amount of shows being put on, by the way, just because he just because he winds up the hurl up afterwards, that does, that's Derek's humour. Doesn't mean he Derek had a shoulder injury and he was struggling a bit with it, and he went into the fight with it. And straight after the fight, he had his shoulder strapped. But he, it's okay. It's okay. So he had the injury, but um, obviously he's on the wind up with Eddie. Yeah, I mean to be fair, I know I was here last Tuesday, and I know you were talking then with him when he had a shoulder injury, yeah. which was five days out from the fight. So, and what he said to Eddie was, I think in the interview he said, "I, um, I did. I just wanted more money from you. Of course, he wants Eddie. Derek always wants. We always. He's always negotiating." Um, that's what, and that, and but that's it's not to say there was. wasn't a problem with his shoulder. No, he did have a problem. He did have a problem with the shoulder. But um, at the end of the day, two weeks before the fight, it was it was causing real problems. But yeah. anyway, okay. it's all good. It's all all, well, all ended well. Um, with the amount of shows that are being put on around London and elsewhere, would Steve consider midweek or Sunday shows, or is the main focus always a Friday and Saturday? Well, if you look about the amount of shows in London, who are putting them on? The only shows you've got to be worried about going against are any O2 pay-per-views yeah. and any Joshua show. Yeah. Apart from that in London, who are we going to clash with? Greg Steenmo Pryor? Fine. Mickey Elliott? Fine. MTK? Fine. You've done one on a Sunday before, didn't you? We've done a Sunday Money before. Macho. We've done it because we didn't have it, we didn't have a date. The, the thing was, when we lost the Joshua card, on the, we, we, we cancelled the card on the 22nd that I was going to promote at, the, at your call, but there were no other dates. Now, if there was a Sunday, I might have run a Sunday, but your call didn't have anything, so yeah. we moved to Tottenham for two shows instead. So, but yeah, midweek, you just the boys wouldn't sell tickets. And you've yeah. got to remember, this is when you're off TV, it's OK Matchroom doing it for the big names, but small hall shows are not going to sell midweek in London. Do you find tickets selling hard? I know you do a decent number, and you're certainly up in Leeds. Um, and didn't you bring down two coach loads for... Uh, uh, this one, there were, yeah, there were a few came down. Um, obviously, we had a date change, so yeah. a lot of them couldn't make it, and it was a Friday, which was a bit awkward. Um, but yeah, I get great support, but it's a complete headache selling tickets. Anyone yeah. that sells tickets will say the same thing. Yeah. It's a headache. But it's also, I mean, um, I know all boxers are appreciative of those fans that. With You know, you're very realistic without these people buying tickets, you don't box. Yeah. People it's get, a symbol of that, isn't it, really? If you're not covering, you know, we're talking small little boxes you're not covering your your opponents so you're not you're not getting on the shows yeah and you're very lucky your own pocket so do you get a lot of business out of your gym for that as in people to come to train with you and um the gym's sort of establishing itself Um, and that's just been a natural progression obviously some people that come to the shows or come and train females and stuff like that we run a couple of only female only classes um but the gym is in its own right is just taking off itself yeah yeah. Excellent. Cool. Uh, right, where was I? Um, question from Stuart How? How you doing, Stuart? Uh, where does Chisora go now? Well, it looks to me, my view, we haven't spoke, only spoke to Derek yet, yeah. but there look to be several options. Manuel Char for the WBA, WBA regular. regular. He's got to fight a Quado. <laughs> is it Quendo? Yeah, Fred Aquendo. Aquendo. Who won it in a court battle in New York about three years ago, and he's still somehow mandatory. So he's, still, so he's got that fight, which. Um, so we're not going to travel for it. I don't think we're going to want to travel. But I, if um, Eddie could. That's an option for putting it over if we can get that over here. So that's option one. Obviously, Wilder, I don't think that's, that's realistic. Um, you've got the Dylan Wyatt rematch. I don't think Dylan. I, can't see Dylan wanting it, but that becomes that's a potential fight that I know Derek would would like. Um, you've got Parker. I don't really see a lot. You know, so, as, uh, again, I'm not sure that sells on the back of Parker's two losses. Yeah. Um, who else have we got? It, then, I'll throw a name in. Go on then. Fury, Tyson. I know they fought twice before, and I know the second they one. Are such good mates. I know, but like. There's a part of me that Tyson needs these step-up fights. Um, and I know he's fought Derek twice. I know the second one was a very one-sided fight that that Derek didn't come out well out of. Um, I can't see that. 
Yeah, uh, you were just throwing a name. I can't, in I can't see. I, I can't see that. I don't think that's the right fight to go back to somebody that you've had two defeats from under any. You know, I just don't. I just wonder if Tyson kind of. You know, he's not at the level that he was. And you've Derek also got. You've also got the fact that you would. Then, then you'd be Derek would be giving up the Sky potential pay per view platform. So, True. So you've, I'm not sure that's easily made, and they're really, really good buddies. It's like Derek and Tony Bellew. They're such good buddies. They're out having lunch on Sunday. They're going to fight. I can't see that. Oh, I think yeah. they're in different parts. I, I just don't see it. I think it depends. I mean, hopefully Eddie's going to be able to get one of the ones that we want. Um, Man of the Charm. Yeah. Like that's that. the one I like, but because I think Derek's very beats, beatable. I think he beats him, and that's the fight ideally. I would I think I think it's possible but again I haven't spoke I'm talking about, I haven't spoken to Derek yet which we are going to sit down and talk and I'm sure Derek would fight anybody but we need to make the right move but that would if he became regular world champion that would be putting him in a fantastic position yeah even though the WBA said they're getting rid of those titles but they're not they want the money of course they're not Gilberto Mendoza I spoke with my podcast he lied to me um also, please wish Sam luck. I met her in Leeds about five and a half years ago. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, questions from Daniel Smith. When do you think Chazor will be back out again? And he says it's hopefully, popular, no, hopefully November, December. It's possible that he flew up. Is, uh, totally, November. but November, there's no, uh, I think there, there, there's going to be a big show in November, December, but I would like to see him out there. Cool. Um, a question for you Sam from Daniel Smith what do you think needs to happen to take women's boxing to the next level I think we need to revive all this uh, I agree I think domestic yeah the, 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 I mean it, it's obviously hard because there's not a massive pool of a lot of female fighters in the same divisions but I think once we start getting more and these rivalries start building interest starts building better fights then we're then we're going to start getting it's not a very mature market though is it like it's only really been I know it's been happening not underground but under the, the radar almost yeah. until Katie Taylor came along yeah. and then that changed everything this has been the first for me I think this has been the first real people are you know you, you're putting Boxing Nation on and you're seeing females mm. boxing on every other card and you wouldn't have seen that. Yeah. Do you feel like, um, do you have a responsibility as like a, a groundbreaker? And I know you're probably not going to, you're not going to reap the rewards of it, but the next generation of women might. I think it, probably a couple, a couple of, you yeah, know. Yeah, maybe in 15 yeah, years providing it. I think as long as we put good fights on, we make good fights, we make good fights happen, next do the same, it, it can only get stronger. But if we, if it's weak fights, then... People are not going to, you know, it's gonna, not going to take the interest. But it might take 15 years. There might be girls that are, you know, 10 years old now watching yourself on TV, Katie Taylor, yeah. Nicola Adams, that think, I want to go to a boxing gym and take that up. Yeah. And, you know, they may not come through for another 10 years on the back of that. that uh, yeah, that's obviously really possible. But as long as it's happening and yeah. it keeps moving, um, but we just need more, obviously. I think, I think some rivalries need to need to happen and yeah. get you, a bit will you stay in boxing as like a train or something when you finish it? yeah I'll never I can't so imagine just, ever you know I've got the gym and the gym is doing well do you think you're training professionals females um, and stuff possibly yeah. yeah you know we've just set up amateur now yeah um, which I've not kind of I'm not involved with I'm mm -hmm. just concentrating on what I need to do um, so the guys in the gym are looking after that we have people coming in and um, my cousin Stevie He'll probably come and pay you a visit in about a year or so. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, Is he good? <laughs> he's good. He's good. Yeah, he's um, my loves him. He's a talented lad, but he's gonna have a year back in amateurs or a season, should I say, and then see what Steve thinks. Of. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, final question from Daniel Smith: Does Chisora frustrate you at times? He puts on a performance like that and the white fight, but then like in Monaco, he can really disappoint, which I know there were circumstances about. I think, I think, um, you know, my wife, I looked after Derek from, the first fight I did with him was a Dylan White fight. So I took time to get to know how he ticks. Um, I now understand what he needs and how it ticks. And, and it's not frustrating as such, I think, I think Monaco was a set of circumstances around him that was just never going to fun never going to work for him. But hopefully now, after that performance, I believe he'll believe because yeah. we got to remember. And I said this. I think I've said this before. It's the first time when Derek has been in a massive fight that he's won. 
because whilst he beat um, Malik Scott, I don't class that as a big fight because Malik Scott was an undefeated American who then proved yeah. he wasn't world class, <clears throat> right? So he beat Helenius, I believe, but he was robbed. But the rest of them, Tyson Fury, David Hay, Dillian Pulev, he never won those fights, despite it was, dis- you, it was split decision against Pulev, split decision against Dylan White. He's never got, he's never gone there and produced that big performance. And I spoke to Derek last night and there was a massive change in him. And I felt like he, fun- he finally knew this was it, he, he, she's shown it at last. And it, it was really good to hit, to hear that. And if he can take that positivity into the next fight, why can't he carry, build that, carry on and build that through? I just don't see why not. Have an Indian summer to his career. Why not? Why not? Who wouldn't want to see it? We'd all want to see it. Or Dill Boy coming through. That'd be amazing, because I remember back to that first Tyson Fury fight where he turned up, they had him in the little Robin Reliant, didn't they? Yeah. Like, ah, oh, I'd love to see that culminate in a, you know, one huge world championship opportunity. 100%. And I, I think, I think it can happen. No reason why not. Um, question from Oliver McManus. I like Oliver, does a lot of good work of uh, covering lots of different aspects of boxing. Um, probably a question for both of you, really. How tricky is it to match female fighters when there's a comparatively small pool of fighters to choose from? So from your side, Sam, like if you're, you know, you've got two fights coming up by the end of this year. You, I guess, is your first look to go domestically or is your first thought to go internationally? Um, well, obviously we'll, we'll leave that to the, to the matchmakers, they'll come back with names and some of them are just like, what's, you know, what, what's the point? <laughs> you see them and they're like, there's no point. So that, I know that from speaking to the matchmakers, they have a real, yeah. it's a task for them. And especially the ones that haven't matched females before, it's some are, they don't realise how difficult it can be. So they kind of leave it like they do the guys yeah. and, then, and then they go into panic mode. They're like, we, we, you know, we can't match, we can't find anyone or... But do you know, I don't know, do you know kind of 20 females in your weight category around Europe? Would you? Probably not. Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult one, isn't it? That like, it, because it's so underexposed in certain places. I know it's not in like Germany and- yeah. you know, there's only about 25 ranked in the Commonwealth. That's it, in the right. Commonwealth. When, when we did the Commonwealth title, the, I mean, Anisha Bashir was not, the, not our choice. And, but every other female that we were trying to get were out, for, there was a reason why they couldn't come all, and Ramadan was a lot, because a lot of them were African fighters. So it was, we had an option of one fighter for the Commonwealth title, because we had to do it on that day, because it was David Hay, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So it had to be that day. So we were stuck. So throughout the whole Commonwealth, we could get one opponent for that day. Yeah. Who qualified. So does Kev find it hard then, for if you've got females coming? Well, I know it's a bit difficult. We haven't really done it yet, because yeah. we had Angela Hebden on a show, and we did match her quite comfortably we managed to match her it wasn't a problem um so we've actually only had the the thing doing once with um when we do we'd obviously done the second one was for sam but obviously for sam's next one we're going to be i think i don't think it's as bad as bad as it seems and you, you know i've established some context and we can get it just we don't want to be putting one with this ramadan in a big yeah. fight and stuff like that so if you're ruling out a large percentage of your unfortunately you're ruling, out, you're ruling out 70 percent of your marketplace yeah unless you're going to go for europe and then you know you go for a european title or something like that but yeah it's, it's a lot more it's a lot more difficult but yeah. but it's, it's doable Final question then, um, comes from Oscar Smith. Uh, with Joyce training out in Triple G's camp, he's, tra- he's changed trainer, hasn't he, officially? Yeah, officially able to change. Um, does Steve think that there will be a shift in seeing him fighting in the States for the next few fights? If that happens, what will the likely effect be on Goodwin boxers who are boxing on his undercard in the UK show? It's a good question, that. It's a really good question, but it's a question for David Hay. Well, that's true, it's Haymaker Promotions, isn't it? Yeah, so I, I can't answer that. The only person that could answer that is David Hay. Yeah. Um, and because David Hay's promoting, she's got Joe Joyce. I don't know, but I guess if David Hay, if, if David Hay is promoting, does he promote without Joe Joyce? Does he build a, a stable of fighters that are TV worthy? About a young lad from Luton that likes you, don't feel? Oh, that's the one. Yeah, it, uh... um, but I believe you know. But yeah, I think I, I have my own views, as you know. And um, but I think the question really, I don't want to answer a question on behalf of David Hay. I think yeah, it should be. No, that's fair enough. Um, so that's all the questions 
Uh, yeah, no, thank you for your time, Sam, no, coming down. Um, and yeah, Steve, as always. I want to give a special mention to Dave Allen as well. Oh, that was great. Oh, man. what a moment. I was so happy for When him. he threw that right hand with his fucking ankle, didn't he? Like... <laughs> I hope now. I hope now he, t- he takes boxing. I hope this is his, his moment where he takes. I know that's going to be something he can live with forever. Whatever happens to his career, but he now he should give himself the opportunity of now really yeah. maybe doing it. He, he always had a chance against Nick Webb. I've never rated Nick Webb ever since a Harry Miles fight. Yeah, I remember, I remember, I remember that. It was life and death, wasn't it? He lost, in my opinion, he lost over a full rounder, and I think he won by four rounds um, in the end. But I know he's a two-time ABA champion. It can't be disregarded, and he can whack. I'm not doubting that. For sure. But David Allen, to get that win on Saturday night, I was so elated. Uh, I was actually out in a taxi going out for a night out at the time. Um, it was amazing. I watched it. I was, I was at the back of the room. I saw the punch going. I thought, oh my God, I walked out just literally before he punched, before he threw it. Because he's such a good bloke, Dave. He's like, totally such good. a good bloke. Mm, no, yeah, but whether, listen, but whether or not he chins Nick Webb, he's still going to lose to me at table tennis. <laughs> Dave, if and when you see this, <laughs> Dave, um, gonna, I'm going to beat you at table tennis. Well, he lost. He to called me out. Anderson. He called me out again last week. He did table tennis. I see. He said I've got to play at table tennis. I'm thinking. He did, but then he lost to Carl Frampton. So he's damaged goods now, isn't he? You need Frampton, not Dave. I think the thing is he needs to avoid me because he's now he's, he's lost to Tony Yoka, lost to Carl Frampton at table tennis. <laughs> Now he's on the winning trail, he wants to stay that way and avoid me. Yeah, no, no, that's fair enough. We'll try and get it organised. <laughs> uh, excellent. So, no, thank you for your time. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Steve. And uh, we will see you next week. Next week. Cheers.